And we'll move on to the next module where we will try to learn these parameters. And initially, we'll try to learn them by guesswork. And I'll show that that's actually infeasible. That's why we need a more principled approach. Okay. So we'll keep the supervised machine learning setup in mind. And now we'll focus on this model and discuss an algorithm for learning the parameters, which are W and B, right? Given some data using a put given appropriate function, objective function. Right? So that's what we are going to focus on. Okay. Now sigma here stands for the sigmoid function, the logistic function in this case. When this sigma is actually the logistic function. And now I'm going to simplify this further so that it helps us to do a better analysis. I'm just going to consider the case where I have just in one input and the bias. Okay. And also following the normal terminology in the literature, this W naught from now on I'm going to call it B. Because that's the normal convention, B stands for bias. Okay. So I have two parameters W and B, which I need to estimate. Okay. And this is my model for uh, the movie example. And the other change which I'm going to make is, instead of deciding whether I like or dislike, which is one zero, the setup that I'm going to work with is that I'm giving the critics rating and I want to predict the IMDB rating. Right? So I'm given a real value and I also want to predict a real value. For no particular reason, this just makes life easier for me for explaining a few things. But the same thing or the same algorithm would also hold if you had a binary uh, output, right? And we'll see that later on in the course, okay? So is the setup clear? We just have two parameters W and B. And uh, we are going to assume that Y belongs to real numbers. It's an IMDB rating and X also belongs to real number. It's a critics rating, okay? Now let's see. What we are given as training is a set of points, we are given some end training pairs and now we understand what this means. That means for a lot of movie I am giving the critics rating and I am also given the true IMDB rating for them. Of course in the two variable case this does not make much sense but uh, just bear with me. Okay. And now the training objective is such that whatever my function predicts which is a function of W, X and B that should be very close to the true output that I know. Right? This is the function that I want to optimize. Now let me ask you this. I'm trying to tell you that I'm going to give you an algorithm for training this network. Now suppose I've trained this, okay, with two data points, 0.5 comma 0.2 and 2.5 comma 0.9, right? At the end of training, I'll give you some values of W and B. Let's call them W star and B star. These are the final values of W which I've given you, W and B. What do you expect from these values? What do you expect at the end of training? If I say, okay, now the network has learned, what do you expect? It's still going to the test case. I'm just talking about the training still. Okay. We expect such that what happens if I plug in at the end of training, if I plug in the value 0.5 here, what should happen? 0.9. Right? So this is what you expect at the end of training. If you plug in the value 0.5, it should be very close to 0.2, the output. And if you plug in the value 2.5, it should be very close to 0.9. Right? This is exactly what you expect. And this is what training means, okay, fine. Uh, in other words, we hope to find a sigmoid function such that these two points lie on that function. Can you imagine a geometric picture for this? What would happen actually? How many of you can imagine it, okay? How many of you get it now, right? This is what will happen, right? So, you'll get a sigmoid function such that these two points lie on that. Fair? And that exactly means that when I plug in this value, I'll get this value. And when I plug in this value, I'll get this value, right? So that's what it means, okay. So let us see this in more detail. And now what we'll do is, our quest is for this W star and B star. And we'll try to find this manually. I'll do some random guesswork and try to find this. Because I don't have any clear principle algorithm for finding it as of now. So I'll just use some guesswork. So I'll give my initial guesswork as W equal to 0.5, B equal to 0. For no reason, I just picked up some values, right? And this is what the function that I got. What does this mean, this function? Uh, an error. So the sigmoid formula should be here. We should have the sigmoid formula here. So is this a good, are you happy with this solution if I give you? Uh, are you happy with this solution? Is this good, bad, ugly? There has to be something. Bad, okay, we'll not call it ugly. Okay. 
So why is it bad? It's not passing through those pawns. But okay, I'll ask you a question. How bad is it? Can you assign a number to it? We're always good at qualitative stuff, but quantitatively, can you tell me a number? How bad is this? Can you tell me a way of finding how bad this is? I already told you in detail how to find that how bad it is. The loss function, right? We have the loss function. Let's see that again and see if we can find out how bad this is, okay? So this is what my loss function is, okay? And I have two data points. I'll just expand it out, fine? Now I'll plug in the values. I know this is 0 0.9 and I'll compute the value of f 2.5. I'll plug in this and I'll plug in this, okay? And this is what I get. So this is how bad it is. What did we actually expect it to be in the good case? Zero. So this is not zero, this is 0 0.073. So now we have a quantitative handle on how bad this is, okay? So let's keep this in mind and let's try to continue guessing. So we want the loss function to be as close to zero as possible. We are not there yet. So then I make a different guess. I say, okay, let me try minus 0 0.10, 0 0.00. What happened now? Is it now good, bad, ugly? Now let's call it ugly, right? So it is worse. And how do I know it's worse? Because I plugged it into the loss function and I got a value which is greater than the value at which I was. So I clearly know this is bad. Okay, so now this is how my mind is working, right? Oh, I, as far as W was positive, things looked okay. At least I was close to zero in the first decimal. Now when I made it negative, that does not look good. So let me just keep it positive and keep increasing it, right? So I saw 0.94 and I also tweak the B a bit. I've done complete random guesswork, right? Now what happened? Good, bad, ugly? Better, okay? Now what will you do? What would your next guess would be? Make W even more positive? Perhaps that would help and B even more negative and so on. And I can continue in this manner and actually get close, very close to the solution. So I can do this guesswork and find these values, but it's still an educated guess, right? I'm not guessing in the dark. This is what is helping me drive towards those guesses. I'm just looking at these values and making an educated guess, right? And that's the educated guess which I took that probably making W even more positive would help. But this is still brute force in a sense, right? This is not something that you'd want to do when you have 100,000 parameters and so on, right? And 1 million data points and so on, right? Okay. So let us look at something which is better than our guesswork algorithm. Uh, so we are not there yet. Actually, on the next slide, I'm still going to talk about the guesswork algorithm and eventually we'll get to something which is better than the guesswork algorithm, okay? So since we have only two points and two parameters, what I can do is I can take all possible values of W and B, right? That's what I was trying. I was picking up some values of W and B. Why just pick some values of W and B? I'll pick all possible values of W comma B, right? And I'll fix the range. I cannot fix, pick it from minus infinity to infinity but I'll pick a range, I'll say from minus six to six, let me try all values of W comma B, compute the loss and plot it, right? Now let me tell something about this error function because this is going to stay with us for quite some time. So what you see here is something like a flying carpet. This is, error, uh, this is color coded. Red is bad, red are the places where the error is high. Blue is good, blue are the places where the error is low. Darker the shade of blue, lower the error darker the shade of red, higher the error. So in particular, if I look at this point, what has happened is I have taken the corresponding value of W comma B, right? Which is say minus four comma minus one, right? Something like that. I've plugged that value into my loss function and I got this as the loss function. This as the loss value. And that's what I have plotted for all values between minus six to plus six and minus six to plus six for W and B. So everyone understands how I've constructed this error surface, okay? Fine, okay. Now this of course becomes, and now what I can do is once I see this error surface, I know, oh good, this is the point where I need to be. This is the darkest uh, uh, shade and this is where the error is the lowest. So I can just pick a W comma B value which lies there. This is fine for this toy example where you just have two parameters, but this becomes untractable once you have more data points and many more parameters. And that's what happens in most real world applications, right? So this is not a feasible way of going about things, right? And here again, note that I have only taken the range from minus six to six. I don't even know what will happen if I have to look at all values of W comma B, right? Maybe there was something outside here, right? Which was even more lower error or something like that, right? 
So, I do not really know that. So, I cannot really use this. So, I need something better than this plotting the error everywhere and finding it out right? that is pure brute force. A surrogate to this was the guesswork algorithm, but which is again something we cannot do for if we have large number of parameters. So, everyone gets this that this is a way of finding the solution, but this is not feasible right that is the only point I am trying to make ok. And we look at the geometric interpretation of what was actually happening in the case of the guesswork algorithm with respect to the error surface ok. So, I had chosen some values of w comma b the first value which I chose actually gave me an error of if you remember it was some point 0 0.073 or something like that right. So, that is the point. Then I decided to take a very random guess and my error actually increased. So, you see that I am actually climbing up on this error surface I have gone from a slightly darker shade of blue to a lighter shade of blue right. And then I corrected myself and then kept moving in a direction where I was going towards the darker and darker shades of blue. So, what I was actually doing is I was trying to traverse the error surface and land up in the good regions which were the dark blue regions. Now, what I want to do is I want an algorithm which will allow me to do this in a principled manner which is neither brute force nor guesswork ok. So, that is where we will end that module. Mm -hmm.